What's going on guys, John Elder here from CodeMe.com and in this video, I'm gonna show you how to do round buttons with Kinter and Python. All right guys, like I said, in this video, we're gonna do round buttons. But before we get started, if you like this video, wanna see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out CodeMe.com where I have dozens of courses with hundreds of videos that teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off membership. That's all my courses, videos, and books for one time fee at just $49, which is insanely cheap. All right, so I've been getting a lot of questions lately about how to do round buttons in Kinter. And that's what we're gonna look at in this video, but the short answer is you can't. This is a button in Kinter. They're square, they're regular, you can't really change them. But we can sort of hack it around a little bit and make it so that we can use round buttons. We just have to use images. So that's what we're gonna do in this video. So let's go ahead and close this. And I've created a new file, I'm calling it round.py. It's the basic Kinter code, starter code that we always have. We've got a title, we've got an icon. We're gonna make it 400 by 400 and we've got our main loop. And of course we're importing Kinter. So right off the bat, Let's see, uh, let me pull up Photoshop. I just found this button online at a free photo website that you can download free images on. And it's just a basic login button. It's transparent, you can see. I've just got it open in Photoshop. And I saved it to our C GUI images directory. If you've been watching these videos for a while, you know we've got a directory in our GUI directory called images. And from time to time, I throw image files in there. If you haven't been following along with the videos in this series, check the playlist. Uh, in the comment section below, there's a link to it there. So what we need to do is use an image and make it into a button. So how do we do that? Well, first, let's just create uh, a, a label. I'm gonna call it image label. And that's gonna be a label and it's gonna be in root. Well, actually we don't need to do anything with it right yet. Let's go image underscore label dot pack. And let's give this a pad Y of 20 for now. And what we wanna do is make this label into an image. We've done this before and we can use the photo image widget to do that. So I'm going to call this login because it's a login picture or login underscore BTN maybe. And then this is just photo image and then the file equals. And like I said, I put this in images and then the name of the file itself is login dot PNG. It's a PNG file. All right. So now we can just take this login button image that we've defined and just stick it in here as image equals that right now in the past we've done a little bit different sort of image things we've used the pillow library you can do that as well in the same way we've used images in the past this is just sort of an easier way to quickly do simple images so that's what i'm going to use so i'm going to go ahead and save this and let's head over to our terminal and let's run python round.py and when we do boom, we get this image. Now this is not a button, it's just an image, right? So we can't, I'm clicking on it now and nothing is happening, but at least we've got it on the screen. So this is the image that we're gonna use. We're gonna turn it into a button. So to do that, let's create an actual button and I'm gonna call it my underscore button and let's set that equal to a button widget and it's in root and we want the text to equal click me and we want the command to equal thing. Doesn't really matter. And let's go my underscore button dot pack and give this a pad Y of 20. So now we've got this command. Let's create this function. And I'm just going to come up here and define it. And let's create a label and I'm going to call it my underscore label. And then let's config that and then set the text equal to you clicked the button. Dot, 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 right? And then down here, we need to actually define that label. So let's go my label and it is a label and it's in root and we want the text right now to equal nothing. And then we need to put this on the screen. So my label dot pack and let's give this a pad Y of 20 as well. So let's just save this and make sure this is working right. So we click me, you click the button, right? Again, this guy up here still doesn't work. <laughs> so. Okay, so now what we need to do is put this image in this button, right? And it's super easy to do that. So all we have to do is grab, well, basically this right here, this image equals, and just come down here to our button. And instead of text, 
we just put that in. Now I'm going to come up here and let's see our image label. Let's take this off the screen. Okay, so that the image is gone, but now the button should be an image, right? So go ahead and save this. Now let's run it. And we see we've got this button and you notice it's still square, but it's clickable. And when we click on it, the function gets called and it outputs you click the button to the screen. So, okay, the button works. And that's cool. But likely, this is not what you want. You don't want to have this outline for this image. It's kind of stupid looking. Well, maybe you do want that. It just sort of uh, depends. Uh, if you're using a square image, maybe you do want the button to be raised like that. So it just depends on what you're doing. But I don't want this square thing around here. So I want to get rid of it. How do we do that? Well, that is super easy. We just give our button a border width attribute. So let's head back over to our code and find our button. And right after the command, we can just go comma border width. And then we can set this equal to anything. We can set it equal to 10 to make it really thick. If we run this. Now suddenly we've got this big border around here. That's definitely not what we want. What we want, obviously, is to set this equal to zero. So then that will make no border around it. And uh, let's run this and see it. And boom, there we have it. Now, if we click on it, boom, it kind of, you can see it kind of moves when you click on it. So that's cool, just like a regular button would. But here you have nice rounded button and uh, it works. Now, I realize when people ask me, how do we make round buttons or rounded buttons? They're not really talking about this. They don't want to create an actual image that they have to then use. They want to just like give the button itself an attribute of rounded corners or something. But you can't do that. That's not how Kinter works. What you can do is make images like this and you can make them look any way you want, right? So um, let's pull up. Let me just really quickly pull up a file explorer, pull this over. So here is our GUI directory and here's our images directory inside of that. And here's some of the images I've used in the past. So here's aspen.png. It's a great picture of my dog Aspen. We can use that if we wanted to. So uh, you could come back here and set this photo image thing. Instead of login, we can change it to Aspen, right? If we save this and then run it, well, let's close this first. Boom. Now let's run this again. We see the whole thing here is, is the picture. And still, we can click on it and it has a button. So you can make these look however you want. And that's really kind of powerful, really. You just need to, you know, work on your Photoshop skills. Or like I did, I went to a free image website. There's thousands of them online. You can just Google it. And I just downloaded a button that I liked and saved it to that directory. And that worked. So let me change this back. Very cool. So that's really all there is to it. Pretty simple. And uh a nice way to style your app. Now, Kinter also comes with themes that you could sort of download and install that will change how a regular button looks, but that is very convoluted and very messy and hard to do. And just doing it like this using an image, I think is much, much easier. So that's what I suggest you do. So that's all for this video. If you liked it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out codemy.com where you can use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off membership. So you pay just $49 to access all my courses, over 40 courses, hundreds of videos, and the PDFs of all my best-selling coding books. Join over 100,000 students learning to code just like you. My name is John Elder from codemy.com, and we'll see you in the next video.